Well, I, I, it went back farther than I actually knew. Uh, I knew that, at, that the agricultural understanding was the first agreement that was signed when we uh, were forming diplomatic relations with China. So that was signed in 1978, and then we actually signed the uh, diplomatic relations in 1979. And we've been collaborating, you know, continuously from 1978 up until before, just before COVID. Uh, so that uh, particular arrangement I knew about. But it turns out that agricultural collaboration goes all the way back into the early 1970s. And that was negotiated by uh, Henry Kissinger and Joe and Lai when they were exploring under, during the Nixon administration ways for the, you know, the, univer the, the uh, United States to begin working with China and opening up our relationship with China. So in 1972, the United States and China signed the, uh, you know, developed the Shanghai Communique, was what it was called. And in that was an added in, you know, and the diplomats really thought it was something to add in, but didn't have a lot of, um, you know, diplomatic significance was, you know, we can exchange, um, you know, science and technology. Uh, and they added that into the to, to the uh, Shanghai communique. And right away, the first thing that the Chinese really wanted to learn more about was agriculture. So they quickly negotiated a series of exchanges, but because we didn't have diplomatic relations, we didn't have any embassies. Uh, so how are we going to orchestrate these scientific exchanges? So the uh, National Academy of Sciences in the United States stepped up to do the, uh, to, uh, you know, arrange for the scientists to move back and forth between the United States and China. And then a, 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 a similar science uh, academy in China. And those two groups orchestrated the exchanges. So, so uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, so they organized uh, a series of agricultural exchanges. There were five U.S. teams that were, were, were planned to go to China and seven Chinese teams come to the United States. So Karen, you say that China immediately expressed an interest in agriculture. Was this driven by just practical needs, a lot of people to feed what we might today call food security? Uh, yes, indeed. I mean, at the time, China had just under a billion people and population and they could feed themselves. Uh, which was one of the first things that the scientists, the American scientists, when they went to China were surprised to discover was how productive Chinese agriculture wa was, but the population was continuing to grow. And, you know, they were projecting into the future. They were able to keep up, but they were projecting into the future that we're going to have to continue to expand our agriculture. And China now has 1.4 billion people. So the population has expanded and uh, their agriculture has, you know, uh, grown and modernized.